Hey, all this is Isaiah Stanback. Big Nate Newton and I are excited to announce a brand new partner for our Let Me Tell You Something podcast, the Niagara Corporation. There's a very good chance you've heard of Niagara before, but just in case you haven't, Niagara is the country's leading manufacturer of water conserving plumbing products. We're talking about saving real money with products like Niagara's Stealth Technology Water Conserving Toilets that reduce water usage up to 60%. We love that Niagara also works with affordable housing projects and commercial multi-unit properties to save water usage in dollars where it's needed the most. So if you want to conserve water and save money on your own projects, check out NiagaraCorp.com. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Stanback, back in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. And I'm always here with my big dog, Nate Dog. What's going on with you, baby? Hey, you know what? This is going to be one of the best yeah, we gonna shows bring this. ever. Yeah. We finna light this up. Yeah, we're going to light it I'm up. I'm going to tell you something. No, I'm going to oh, tell boy. you something. Yeah, because <laughs> you tell me for what we going to talk about. Man, I listen can't up. wait. Listen up. We're going to get into it. We know we got to hit on the Cowboys for a hot second, but we're going to bring it back because something just went down in the city of Indianapolis. Yeah. Yes. They fired their coach. They fired the OC before they fired the coach. But now, I mean, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't do it yet. We, right. let's, let's reel it back. Let's reel it back. back. Nate Dog. Yeah. Your boys, Dallas Cowboys, are playing the Green Bay Packers this yes, week. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, Green sir. Bay Packers. You got A.A. Ryan out there, and they're struggling. Right. They're on the struggle bus. That's right. right? The question is, are you going to face the real A.A. Ryan, or are you going to face, face the struggling A.A. Ryan? You know what? <laughs> It's a movie I watch, man, and it say the boogeyman. Uh-huh. And it's called John Wick. <laughs> and they tried to stomp John Wick out by eight times. Uh-huh. And then what? And then the, but he always rises back up. Sure do. You know, from the ashes. Uh-huh. And that's how I look at Aaron Rodgers. Okay. Until you know that he is dead. You better put some respect on him. You better put some respect on that yeah. man's name. I agree. Yeah. I, I don't disagree with you. I think that... Something's going on within that organization. Yes. And I, I feel like they don't like him. I feel like Green Bay Packers organization dislikes Aaron Rodgers. They, they don't, don't like, like that dude. No. They're paying him $50 million. This is what happened during the offseason. They asked Aaron Rodgers and his agent, Aaron, if we pay you this money, we can't help you. We can't help you with mm. other players, especially players that can impact what you do. And Aaron said, you going to give me the 50 mil or you want to spread? No, I'll take the 50 mil. He's a product of kind of what he's gotcha. done to himself. I hear you. I you hear know, you. so, uh, but I don't think they feel him right now. And I know they don't, he don't feel them. So this is what you get. But he is still John Wick, the boogeyman. <laughs> I'm I agree, telling you. I agree with you. And I, I know a lot of people probably wouldn't agree with you and myself because of the fact of what he's shown on the on the tape. You know, last yes. week against Detroit Lions, he threw three picks out there. But those three picks, one of them I would say is his fault. Right, right. I would say one, ah, two of them. Mm -hmm. Two of them is his fault. He is trying to be good. Yes. In the past, and let's just remind people, who was the MVP of the last two seasons? John Wick. I mean, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, yeah. A.A. Yeah. Ron. Okay? A.A. <laughs> yeah. Ron. Right. Was the MVP of this league. Yes. And there's some really good players in this league. 13 and 3, both Ooh. years. Ooh. And now they're nowhere near that. Yes. But to your point, they don't have the weapons around him. So now he's put in a position now where he is having to exert extra effort. He's having to try things out. But what people don't see, unless you go back and watch the All-22 and really break things down, is these receivers that he's playing with are not doing what they're supposed to do. You wonder why Aaron Rodgers is out here in public calling guys out. It's not the way that I would do it. But the reason why he's doing it is because it is real. That's what's really happening. These guys are not running the correct routes. These guys are not reading the coverages properly. They're putting him in bad situations where he thinks that they're going to run a particular route so he puts a ball in a particular place, and then guess what happens, Nate Dog? INT. INT. INT and INT. The running game's not going anywhere. Aaron Jones and freaking uh, A.J. D Dillon. Yeah. A heck of a two-headed monster, but these boys collectively have three rushing touchdowns on the year. Three this is this is the problem is I don't worry about sacks with with Aaron Rodgers because he he 
He is elusive. This dude can move in the pocket, but he can also run. If he chose to be a dual threat quarterback, he, could. he can. Yeah. But Aaron, and I'll keep saying this, you you sold out for your money, bro. Ooh. And for the first time, and I don't know how long, Isaiah, their receivers are not smart. Mm. And I hate to say this about another NFL player, yeah. They have been in the past able to get smart guys that could handle the offensive load. And they may struggle the first three games. Yeah. But after that, you saw how seamlessly yeah. they came together. Their receivers are not as smart. Let me, let me peel that back for people yeah. that, are, that are listening because – when Nate says they're not smart, okay, that's not an indictment. That's not a shot yes. at them. That's just the reality in terms of football intelligence. Yes. And when he's when he's speaking on that, there are things that we understand as football players and things that players that have played at the highest level that these receivers are not doing. If per, let's give an example, there was a play last week where uh, what's the receiver? Sammy Watkins. Yes. Yes. Sammy Watkins is lined up one on one with the defensive back. All day long, what's what's the number one route that you're thinking? I'm thinking I could throw a fade route right. or a one-step slant. Right. Okay, cool. So Sammy Watkins looks inside. He sees no linebackers really in there. It's cover zero. These guys are coming after him. He's thinking, oh, man, I can run a slant, and I got all that space in the middle. Right. You know where Aaron Rodgers is looking at? What's that? Aaron Rodgers is looking at the fact that the defensive back is sitting on the inside uh, shade hell yes. of the receiver. He, hey, I remember that play. So if you're sitting on the inside shade and you have a two, you have right. two options on that play as a receiver. Right. Okay. Because it was actually a run play. Right. It was actually a run play that right. is an RPO. Run, right. play, a pass option. Yeah. Okay. Run, pass option. So he can hand the ball off, but if he sees something that he likes, he can throw the ball up. If the if Aaron Rodgers and, and Sammy Watkins understand that based off of this RPO. You can run a slant route if he's sitting head up to outside of you, okay, because that gives you free right. access to the inside. But if he's sitting inside of you, it's going to make it too difficult for you to try to cross that defender's right. face. So take the easy route and run the fade. What, what happens? Sammy Watkins runs a slant. Aaron Rodgers throws a fade. These are the type of plays that most people look at and say, oh, what was that about? Aaron Rodgers is tripping. No, 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 no. Sammy Watkins is tripping. When you look at the interception that he threw down there, when it, when it was two high safeties, I mean, sorry, actually it was a single high safety, and whenever you have a, a combination route as a receiver in the slot, middle of the field open, we, open, we call it mofo, okay? Right. Middle right. of field open. Right. If that's a two safety set, you're supposed to split those, those safeties, right? So you take an inside seam route, that seam route turns into a post, Middle of field close, M-O-F-C, middle of field close. If that safety is sitting up high right. and you have that inside seam, he wants you to cross the face of that safety. Therefore, a deck a week, two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So throw the ball in there. He's going to put it on your chest. You're going to take a shot in the back because that, that safety is going to come down and hit you. Right. But guess what? It's going to be a completion. He throws that ball because it should have been a middle of field close type right. of read. The receiver runs a middle of field open route interception right these are the plays that are happening to Aaron Rodgers and people aren't talking about it he's trying his best not to talk about it publicly but these aren't the plays that you can continue to depend on him to make as you're an opponent going to face him in his hometown the Dallas Cowboys better come prepared they better come strapped up I think that talent wise Dallas far exceeds uh Green Bay's ability to do anything substantial against them that's right but it's John Wick that's John Wick you got to stomp him out. Yeah. Yeah. What, what about the running game? Are they going to be able to get the running game going? Uh, Aaron Jones is practicing. You know what? And I think, uh, and is A.J. Dillon out? Is that, he ain't uh, out. They both they, in. That's what I'm saying. So they got that pounder, and they got they just like we are. They got that pounder, that tenderizer, and they got that dude that can explode all over. And their pounder. You and, know how big this yeah. dude is? Oh, he's a big man. Six foot, 247 right. pounds. And the thing, they call him Quadzilla. The thing that gets me is, if they start running the ball and if they keep it even, yeah, that's why I don't trust John Wick because he'll take over the game. I mean, Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. Yeah. He'll take over the game. He'll finish you. Okay. So that's the difference between a few guys, the two or three teams we played before, is we can't take that chance. We have to come out and stomp them yeah. from, de from the opening tip. We don't want this thing within seven with two minutes left yeah, in the agree. game. Yeah, you don't want to go against what you just faced in Chicago. That game was a little bit too close there yeah. early on. Thank you, man. A little bit too close early on. Um, all right, so we all touched on the Cowboys. Now let's get to the meat and potatoes, Nate. Yeah. Dog on meat and potatoes, okay? Jeff Saturday in the Indianapolis Colts. 
Doggone Ursay, the owner of the Indianapolis Colts. You can do whatever you want to. Okay, you the boss. You can do what you want to. Right. So guess what? You guys get rid of your offensive coordinator because your offense is trash. Right? Then you, then you go out there and you say, you know what, Matt Ryan, the quarterback, veteran quarterback who, who's been to Super Bowls, all that kind of jazz, we're going to sit you down. Okay, because you're not getting it done. You're the problem. First is the offensive coordinator, and then right. it's you. You're the problem, Matt Ryan. We're going to sit you down. So then they sit him down, and then the other quarterback comes in, and I think he throws four picks or something crazy right, like that. Right. So now all of a sudden, they fire the head coach. So not only is not the offensive coordinator, all right, it's not it's not the quarterback. Now it's your head coach. Right. Right. So everybody getting the, getting the axe. And now all of a sudden, instead of looking on the interior of your coaching staff, instead of elevating this this t- pool of talent that you've been developing, what do you do, Nate? Go out and you hire somebody you think qualified outside of the organization. Where they do that at? <laughs> I'm just saying. Where, no, where do they do that at, Nate? <laughs> they, where do you go out? How many normally coaches? you three, go, six, yeah. nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two coaches on the staff, Nate. Yes, but he is. But I know where you want to go with it, but. This man wants to make a, a massive change. He wants to show the fans that he is he's he's taking a turn. So is it that? <laughs> it's our podcast. We can talk about right. whatever we want to. Is it that or is it a show of the good old boy system? I, Let's I, have the conversation that they're not I, having I, on ESPN and the NFL network. Is this I, the good old boy system at hand? This is, I believe. Ursay is trying to make a difference in this program. For for the life of me, I can't see where it's a black white issue or a good okay. old boy thing. I just I can't see it. Okay, because Gus Bradley is not. Is he is he black? No, no, I'm not saying it's a race thing. Right. When I say good old boy, I know a lot of times right. it's utilized in the context of, of okay. race. All right. Okay. okay. Um, or diversity. Okay. Right. So or lack thereof. Okay. When I say good old boy, says okay. I'm saying just you just in the you in the circle. Oh, okay. right. You and you and my I, you you and my clique, right? You my boy. Okay. All right. So whether you're white, black, whatever it is, okay, it yeah. goes both ways. Right. Okay. okay. It goes both ways. Well, right. Isaiah, I'm I'm telling you how I feel. Okay. I think this man wanted to blow it up, and and and, and he he blew it up. Do you agree with the decision, Nate? As of right now, yes, I do. As yes, I know you. I need, I need some context, Nate. I need some context. The, Help me understand why. As a former player, why do you like this move? Because he believes that this man is the next head coach for his football team, that he wanted to shake it up. Much like, not not perfectly, but much like Coach Johnson did, just like Mr. Jones did with Coach Johnson. He went and got somebody totally unexpected. And, and much like what's happening with Saturday, even though Coach Johnson has some head coach experience, this he shook up the NFL. Okay. And I remember it like it was yesterday. He shook up the NFL, and I'm gonna let you get yours in. Then I'm, 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 I'm no, 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 no. Go. Why don't you go ahead and get, expand that, yeah. on that? What as a player when 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 Coach Johnson was hired, what was your nobody th- liked it? Nobody. You didn't like it. No. Well, uh, tell the people. Tell the people, on, man. A, a college coach just come off a national championship with ne- never equal trying to win a Super Bowl. Never, unless that's where you ended your career at in college mm-hmm. and you won a national championship. Okay. So we were like, how is he going to run practice? He don't know nothing about how the pros do it and this, that, and the other. We was going off. I mean, secretly, we weren't saying this. Absolutely. You know, we sneaking this to the media. We saying this behind his back, you know. But Coach Johnson came in and fortunate. And I was, and this is what this is where I'm saying is Mr. The owner of the Colts. Person, have, yeah. As he said to Saturday, we going to get through this year. And then, you know, the Rooney Rule kicks in. They're going to have to give uh, minorities a chance to, to interview. But this is his guy. This is his guy. And that, and now they're going to change everything, Isaiah. What? They, it, whether it's good or bad, I, I, I've i been down this road. Okay. I've been down this That's road. That's what I'm asking you, Nate. I yeah. know you've been down this road. So yeah. I know you know how it feels as yeah, a player. You, as a player, you like all of these great coaches that we had in place. And Coach Landry. Can I give a couple tree. names? Yeah, you can give a couple of names. Can yes, I give can. a couple of names that's yes, on the staff for the Indianapolis Colts that you just yes, may you know? Gus Bradley. Yeah, we know he can coach. 33 years of experience. Yes. 33 years of experience. Super Bowl. That's right. Head coach in the league. Yes, sir. One of the 
one of the great defensive minds. That's right. In the league. In the league. Well respected. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's what I hear. <laughs> Senior defensive assistant John Fox. Yeah. Done done it all. 40 years of experience. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm going to keep going. Go down here. Da, 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 da. Kevin Mawai. Yeah. You remember that dude? Yeah. Tennessee Titans? Yeah. Office alignment? Yeah. Kind of a dude. Yeah. Is he, he, he has a jacket, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Tough guy. Yeah, they, gave yeah. Him, they gave him a jacket. Yeah. Green, you know, gold jacket. Six years of NFL experience, plus a Hall of Fame jacket at the one there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just making sure. Okay. Let me go down here one more time. Uh-huh. Uh, oh. One year of experience. Reggie Wayne. Yes. He has more experience than what Saturday has. Yes. And just as Hall of Famous, right? Yeah. Okay. Just so help me understand, Nate. Help. Culture. This, a culture. We talk about somebody. I'm, I'm assuming you're leaning on the culture change because you can't lean on the coaching experience. That's so, if you, so if you have no coaching experience and you're saying he wants to blow this thing up, what is he leaning on? Why is this his guy if he has nothing to show for it in terms of wins and losses? I cannot answer that. Okay. But I can say this right here. And this is this is the kicker that kills it all. He is the owner. He is the majority owner. And he can buy hire who he, he do wants. Do what he wants to do. And he hired Jeff Saturday because Jeff Saturday played with Peyton Manny. Am I correct? Mm-hmm. And he was their center. And and I'm telling you. What about Reggie Wayne? Ma- no, I don't, let me finish. And maybe they had a relationship. Okay. And if they had that relationship, and he and a lot of owners, and, and it happened to me before, where a lot of owners would walk in and say, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Maybe he was the inside consultant. He was. Ain't, he, ain't, was yeah, he was a consultant. He was a consultant. I ain't saying, what I'm saying, is, I ain't saying this is right. It was too much experience on the coaching staff. It was too many people out there that have laid the groundwork and deserve a shot. But this guy feels like Jeff Saturday has something to offer. And his big thing yesterday was he ain't scared. He don't know nothing about analytics. He don't know that. I mean, the little speech they gave wasn't worth anything. But he believed in his heart and mind that we're going to – I have to believe they're going to blow it all up. And when you look at that coaching staff, after the process of coaches go, it's going to be totally different. It's going to be totally different. And it, whether it's right or wrong, whether we be cheering for this dude in two years, we don't know. I have no problem with Jeff Saturday, Nate. It, I, I know you don't. It's the process of how the coach, it's the how process. the owner did it. It's, it's a slap in the face. It's a, and to your point, ownership can do whatever the heck they want to. Right. right? I own a business. I can do whatever the heck I want right. to. Right? Get it. All right. Cool. Um, there's no respect that was shown with this decision. No respect for who the coaching staff that is already in place. All professionals in this industry. Okay. There is zero respect. So you think that uh, that the 49ers thought that with their guy, their general manager? General Uh, manager is different. You know. General manager is different. But it's Um, a lot of guys that are put in time for that general manager job. It's 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 a lot of guys. But there's people that, there's people in, in scouting. Place. There's people that they can evaluate talent. There's people who are who mm. are you know like there's the general manager is different because you it doesn't require general manager experience. Anybody who's a general manager doesn't you don't have to have already been a general manager. Right. They make you a general manager. Right. Right. But if you want to be a head coach, you, you have, think it's a hierarchy you should go through. You have to go through coaching. Right. You're the coach. Can you think of another coach? That was given the head coaching job that had no other collegiate or professional experience. Nah, nah. I mean, you you may know, you probably have looked it up, but uh this man wanted to change from the norm. Okay. That's what he tried to uh express, you know, yesterday. I looked at his uh deal. Like I said, I don't agree with it, but I I want to see where it go. I, I agree. I, I'm curious too. I'm curious like 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 George right now because I want to see how this thing pans out. And again, I hope nothing but success for Jeff Saturday. I just don't like the way that it got there. And 
for Jeff Saturday to have been on working on ESPN or whatever network he was working on, for him to be tweeting, talking about, you know, the Raiders are trash, and now all of a sudden, in the first game he got a coach is against the Raiders. I think it's just interesting. I think it's interesting. And if I'm Gus Bradley, I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know if I want to coach for this cat no more. Not for Saturday, but for Ursay. The, 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 the thing is, it's a first for a lot of things. And this is a first. This is very unusual what Mr. Ursay has done. Uh, but he's he, he trying to get everybody. I'm thinking outside the box. But they're going to have to come in the box. Because mm-hmm. football is still going to be about who want to hit the hardest. Mm-hmm. Can you line your talent up and mm-hmm. – and, and, and give it the uh, belief that he can perform. Uh, you know, Saturday say I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a leader of men. And, and that's and that's what I was about to get to. And, and I, yeah, I don't if, know how he know he a leader of men when all these well, he, was, he, was, he was a consultant on football or something. <laughs> so I mean, he's a consultant, right? So through right. that consulting, we don't know what was taking what place behind the scenes. Yeah. We don't know, right? We can speculate, but we really don't know. So maybe Ursay realized that, you know what? I really don't need my head coach to be an X's and O's guy. Maybe I need my head coach to be a great representative of the organization. Maybe I need my head coach to be a great man of character. Maybe I need my head coach to be a great manager of men because that's all a head coach is really supposed to do. Right, right. He's supposed to hire other people. He's a CEO, right? He's a CEO. Hire other people underneath you that are really good at what they do, and you just simply just oversee and make sure that the culture and that things are operating the way in which they should go. The, the, the thing here is Frank Wright is a great coach. Okay. The thing that have made and crushed a lot of coaches is not being able to find that quarterback. Mm. Jeff Saturday – First thing you better tell your man, as used to be his consultant, is y'all got to find me a quarterback. So you think this is a this is a play for next year? It got to be. It got either you could have let Frank finished it, or you could have all those great player, great coaches that you just called Coach Bradley, Coach Wayne, Coach Fox. You should. Why didn't you let them finish it out? Cato Jones on the rock. I'm the coaching staff. But I'm saying, and that's what I'm saying. If if, if you doing this just for you know, to get Saturday some experience so he can go back to the booth. That, that, why would you do that? Why, why would you do that? These guys are already in place and has a routine already in place. You, now you went out and let Saturday tell you, this is the guy I want to be my coordinator. If this not, if this not a move for the future, mm. let me tell you something. <laughs> that is very, very dumb. It's already crazy uh-huh. what he's doing. Okay, and out of and out of the norm. Yeah, not 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 to say, oh, d- that experiment didn't work. Wow, really? Yeah. Now what are you really telling the players? You you, there's got to be a play a play a power play on Saturday's part. Uh-huh. Not so much on the owner's part, but this is a power play. See. This is what I believe. Okay. You have sat down as a consultant with this Ursay, the owner, and you. this is what I would do. This is how I would handle it if I had this situation. Now, whether you meant to do that power play, yeah. that was the power play, Z. Yeah. So Ursay sitting up there like, huh. Uh-huh. So Ursay sitting up yes. there. Yes. On on that on the, on the dog on toilet that saved you sixty percent the night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. He, he's sitting yeah. Niagara Prom. <laughs> <laughs> he's sitting Say, up in Niagara. Yeah, sitting up there like, huh, you know what? You know, it might not be a bad dog on idea. People gonna say I'm crazy. Yeah, people gonna say I'm crazy. Isaiah gonna say I'm crazy. Yeah, he gonna say I'm crazy. Now but... I may get one dude out of hundred like Nate. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm think about that. Okay, when you are in a consultant position and. I am my owner, and I say, you know what, Zay, what do you think? What do you think? Mark Cuban has guys like that who sit with him. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And you don't think uh, the owner of Cuban looks? Oh. Hmm. Mr. Jones used to have a few guys like that around him. Hmm. Wow, man, if, you, if you're thinking like this and you're walking through this as we go through this, let's see. Let me see for about nine games. Will you be that same guy as the consultant when I, hey, man, what you yeah. think right that Saturday? What you think about that while yeah. you're smoking your cigars? Oh, no, nah, Coach, this is what I do. 
And then your move would have worked against his move. Hey, you know what? I'm going to hire you. Because he said, I didn't go to nobody else. This was only offered to Saturday. Saturday, knowingly or unknowingly, made a power play on Frank Wright's job. He has it now. And let's see for the next nine, ten games, can he turn this around? You agree? Disagree? I don't disagree with you, Nate, dog. We just have to wait and see. Yeah. And, and, and you know, because the way I look at it is if you can hire an interim coach and you don't have to go through the process where you have to deal with minorities, you know, and then after the season you go, you deal with the minorities, but this is your guy. Hmm. See, and I, that, that's what you, you said, the good old boy, that's what I thought. Like, okay. It's, yeah. But, you know. Yeah. Uh, and and and, and I, I believe this right here. Black, white, Hispanic, and indifferent. Mm-hmm. When the owner knows who he wants, he going to play the game. Yep. And he wants Saturday. Not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, <laughs> or Friday. <laughs> he wants Saturday. You remember the song, Saturday Love? Yeah, I hear yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, I respect uh, it. Uh, you, I you, respect it. I'm going to tell you something, Isaiah. I respect we it. We're going to come back and visit this. I need you to come back and visit it, Nate. So yeah. b- b- before we get out of here, I need you to say it with your chest, though. Yeah. Dude, Saturday is your coach. I'm saying this with my chest. Uh-huh. After these nine games, and they go through the Rooney Rule process, Saturday is your coach. Yes, sir. I'm going to say it with my chest now. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to uh, say it with my chest. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Why are you always trying to swell up? Yeah, I got to swell up on before we get up out of here. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm going to look at Rich right in the eye. Okay. Listen. Right. <laughs> saying it with my chest right here, right now. Okay. Dan Quinn is the new coach of the Indianapolis Colts when the new year starts. You think so? And so Saturday will be back up in there to consult the role, knocking down our you, boy Quinn. You got Dan you Quinn knocking. We, you, you got Dan Quinn knocking, and you got Gilmore and them boys over on defense already. Let, let me tell you something. Yeah. If, 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 if Quinn <laughs> is the coach and Saturday is the consultant, me and you going up there and handle that. All right, we Please, go, that. Because yeah. we love hey, us some yeah. Dan Quinn. <laughs> hey, thank y'all for tuning in, man. That was another yeah. episode of Let Me Tell You Something. We all said it with our chest. We all dropped all the names. We yeah. all talked about it. Y'all let us know what you think about it. We'll see y'all next time. Next time. Saturday. <laughs>